The book of Luke chapter 2 tonight. We'll begin reading in verse 22. <clears throat> Luke 2 verse 22. And when the time came for their purification according to the law of Moses, they brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every male who first opens the womb shall be called holy to the Lord and to offer a sacrifice according to what is said in the law of the Lord. A pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Spirit was upon him. And it had revealed, been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. And he came in the Spirit into the temple. And when the parents brought and the child Jesus to do the excuse me to do for him according to the custom of the law he took him up in the arms and blessed God and said Lord now you are letting your servant depart in peace according to your word for my eyes have seen your salvation that you have prepared in the presence of all people a light for the revelation of the Gentiles and for the glory of your people Israel and his father and his mother marveled at what was said about him. And Simeon blessed them and said to Mary his mother, Behold, this child is appointed for the fall and rising of many in Israel, and for a sign that is opposed, and a sword will pierce through your own soul also, so that thoughts from many hearts may be revealed. Let's pray. Father. Lord, we come before you in the precious name of the Lord Jesus. We thank you, Father, for allowing us this time of being able to come together and look into your word. I pray that you would help us, Father, as we look, that you would open up our eyes. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> in our text tonight, of course, we looked this morning a little earlier on at the birth of Christ and what Mary did and her pondering and her treasuring of these things in her heart. Well, after this, it was according to their custom that eight days after the birth of the child, uh, they would go uh, to the temple, which was about five miles away from where they were at this present time in Jerusalem, and, and perform a sacrifice and some other ritual things that they would do. Uh, this was also during the time of circumcision, the, the, the things they would do to follow the law that God had set. And so it's interesting to me to note this and this was a common thing that everybody would do, but they were following the law of God. They were faithful to the law that God had given Israel, which is what God had commanded them to do. They were doing right. They were being obedient people. Now, we're not under the Old Testament law. We're not under the same things that they were under because we believe that Christ fulfilled all of the Old Testament law. <clears throat> Sometimes you may hear people who, are, who doubt the scriptures or who are trying to bring some accusation against and they say well you say this about Christ yeah I don't see you doing the things they did in the Old Testament I don't see you wearing your clothes the way they wore it or trimming your beard the way the law says or doing the rich, all the rituals that they did well the reason we don't do those things is because we're Christians uh, we're not under the Old Testament law Christ fulfilled perfectly the Old Testament law. The reason they did that was all showing pictures of holiness and purity that was all pointing to the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so it's important for us to understand today that we do not have to do the things they did under the Old Testament ceremonial law. Now that's not to be confused with the moral law, which would be the Ten Commandments. Of course Christ also fulfilled those, but we fulfill those as well. We obey the Ten Commandments. But as far as the ceremonial laws, those pointed to Christ. And so when Christ came, Christ completely, per perfectly kept all of the ceremonial law and thus fulfilled it to where the, the righteousness, we receive it in Christ. You see, when God looks at us after we've accepted the Lord Jesus as our Savior, we've been forgiven, God looks at us and he sees the righteousness of Christ. It's applied to us. And so that's what we get in salvation is the righteousness of Christ. We don't have to fulfill these laws. But it's interesting to note that they were still doing that at this time. They were being obedient, doing what they were supposed to do. So they came to Jerusalem. They came to the temple to fulfill the ceremonial law for Jesus. Now, there was somebody going to be there that day. 
Now, he didn't know that they were coming, and they didn't know that he was going to be there, but the Holy Spirit had spoke to this man maybe years before now, we don't know, and had told Simeon, a man who was godly, who knew the Lord, that, and, and he, he anticipated the coming of the Messiah, as many people did during this time. They didn't know when he was coming, just like we don't know when he's coming again. They didn't know when he was going to come the first time. So he was anticipating the coming of the Messiah, and the Lord had told him through the Holy Spirit that he would not die until he had saw, had seen the Messiah. And so this was a wonderful promise that he held on to. And so anyway, I want us to look a little bit at this. <clears throat> Verse 25, Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, and this man was righteous and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel, the comforting, the peace that would come to Israel. And the Holy Spirit was upon him, and it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. And he came in the Spirit into the temple. He was moved by the Spirit to go into the temple. And when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do him according <clears throat> to the custom of the law, he took him up in his arms and blessed God and said. So here's well, here's the scene. This this man Simeon, who had was a righteous man, a devout man, a godly man, who had been told by the Lord that he would not die until he had saw the Messiah. He sees. Now I don't know exactly what the process uh, that took place here. Maybe the Holy Spirit told him that child, that's the one. We assume that's how it happened. And he walks up, he takes the child, holds it up, and this is what he says. Lord, now you are, <clears throat> now you are letting your servant depart in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation that you have prepared in the presence of all peoples a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for the glory, the, for glory to your people Israel. So he lifts up the child. He begins to say this, this prayer. Some might even refer to it as a song. I'm not sure, but he begins to say this. Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace according to your word. Lord, you've kept your promise. You've done to me exactly what you've said. You told me that you would let me live until I've seen the Messiah. You told me that you would let me live until I've seen your son. And now I can die in peace. I fulfilled my purpose. I've done what, I, what, what it is that I wanted to do, what you've promised that I could do. Now I'm ready to go. For my eyes have seen your salvation. He understood what he held in his hands. Now we understand it was a who that he had in his hands. But it was also a what in that, that this was the salvation of the Lord. This child, this baby, is, was the, the, the avenue, was the way in which God would bring salvation to the world. Now this man understood some things that a lot of people during this time probably didn't understand as well. And we'll get into that into a little bit later as far as the where the Gentiles was involved in the salvation process, but he knew that this was the child that would bring salvation to the world. And he, it's interesting that he uses the word salvation. He understands some things that other people weren't understanding at the times. Many people uh, were expecting Messiah to come, but they weren't exactly expecting a spiritual reign. Uh, they were expecting a physical reign, and there will be a physical reign one day. There will be a time when Christ sits on the throne and he rules physically over the earth. But at this point, his reign is spiritual. And the first coming was his spiritual ruling. And, and, and Simeon understood that. He understood that you've come not to, not to uh, conquer the world by the sword this time. He knew that he had come not to sit on an earthly throne at this time. But he knew that Christ had come for the spiritual purpose of saving all people, of being the salvation for all people, of providing it. And he also understands that there will be suffering for him, as he says in a little bit. He says, <clears throat> you prepared this in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles. Now, uh, the Jewish people were, were very inward focused at this time. They, 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 they loved their religion, they loved their custom, they loved their laws, and that, that's not all a bad thing, but God was about to start revealing a wider picture to them. It wasn't all about them. Salvation isn't all about them. It is about all the people. It's about even the Gentiles. Not only the Jew people, Jewish people, but it's also about Gentiles, that they would be brought into the same salvation. In fact, Paul has said, now that salvation is completed, now that Christ did his work, Paul has said this, that there is now no difference 
There is now no difference between Jew and Gentile. We've been grafted into the same vine. So when we think of Israel, our minds automatically go to a piece of land on the other side of the world. We call it the Middle East. That's where what, that's what we think about Israel. But actually what Israel is today for us, truthfully and spiritually, is all the redeemed of the world. Everyone who's saved is a part of the church. Everyone who's saved is a part of the family of God. We are, as Paul would say in Galatians, spiritual Israel. We are the Israel of God. Whether that person is Jew or Gentile, Physically, it doesn't mean anything because the Bible says he has torn down the wall of partition. He, he has made no difference between physical Jew and physical Gentile. We are all spiritual Israel today, every believer. So he understood this, that, that that's what Christ was doing, was tearing down this wall, tearing down this division between Jews and Gentiles. He said, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. And then he, the, the, the parents respond, it says his father and his mother marveled at what was said about him. And then he turns his attention to the parents and Simon blessed them and said to Mary his mother, Behold, this child is appointed for the fall and rising of many in Israel and for a sign that is opposed. I want to skip, you see the brackets or you see that there, I want to skip down a little bit, it is a sign that is opposed so that thoughts from many hearts may be revealed. So, this Christ is coming to cause some division. And what that division is, isn't between Gentiles and, and, and non-Gentiles, Gentiles and Jews. But this division is between the children of God and the people who aren't the children of God. There is a division coming. And those who follow him are the children of God. Those who do not follow him are not the children of God. But then he turns his attention to Mary and he says, And the sword will pierce through your own soul also. This is a reference to the suffering that Mary will go through when Christ is on the cross. So this man who was moved by the Spirit and promised by the Spirit that he would see Christ, he understood something that it took a long time for his, even his disciples to learn that Christ would suffer on the cross to bring salvation. He might not have exactly known it was a cross that would do it, but he knew that somehow that this Messiah would die. This Messiah would be brought to pain and would suffer for the sins of mankind. And so this is a, a major revelation to him and he speaks of how this is going to divide the world. And we see today how the world is divided between Christ because Jesus had told us during his ministry, he said, they will hate you, the world will hate you because it first hated me. That's a promise that came. And so anyway, we see in this story this man who now is ready to die because he has seen the Messiah. He's overjoyed. He's thrilled. We, we, we learn some information that is helpful information to learn from him that uh, about the Messiah who would suffer, and he told this to the parents. So this, this is very... Um, this particular story helps us understand the scope of the Christmas story. And so I wanted to go over this tonight because uh, sometimes when we preach through the Christmas story, we don't go this far. And so I thought it was a, a needful thing for us to look at this man, Simeon. And eventually, hopefully before the Christmas season is over, we're going to look at the next woman who meets them, Anna. So I wanted to look at Simeon and then we'll look at Anna. Any word or comment tonight? Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we come before you in the precious name of Jesus. We thank you, God, for your son that you sent to die on the cross for our sins. We thank you, Lord, for your grace to us. Father, even through this story, how we understand that you reveal truth to us through your spirit, through your word. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.